I am on Module 6, Lesson 4, Transforming Linear Functions. Okay, um, in Lessons 1, 2, and 3, we did uh, slope-intercept form, we did point-slope form, and standard form of linear functions, equations of linear functions. Um, what we're going to do now <coughs> is take linear functions and transform them, translate them. Um, you did some of this with uh, geometric shapes last year. Um, if you remember like reflection or um, rotation, those kinds of things, where you took an original square, triangle, or whatever, and you reflected it across the x-axis or across the y-axis, or you moved it uh, a certain amount, that kind of thing. Okay, we can do the same sorts of things with lines, linear functions. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. And to help you um, sort of walk yourself or walk us through this, we're going to use um, our graphing calculator. But I will walk you through step by step. And um, it may look intimidating at first because they're talking about things that you don't necessarily know yet, but I will walk you through step by step. Okay, so make sure that you pause and go get a graphing calculator. And when you get your graphing calculator, we're not going to do everything on A, but here's what I want you to do. If this is your graphing calculator, First of all, when you turn it on, you'll probably just get the blinking cursor, okay? What I would like for you to do is go to the window button and just make sure that your graph that they show you is going to go from negative 10 to positive 10 on the x-axis and it's going to go from negative 10 to positive 10 on the y-axis, okay? So that's all that that window is showing you, that that is the range of your visible graph. Okay, so if you go to the graph button, that's what, they're, that's what it should look like. Now, notice your window on your graph is not square. So negative 10 to positive 10 on the x-axis looks a little bit wider than negative 10 to positive 10 on the y-axis, just simply because the... Um, the screen is rectangular rather than square. Okay, but you still have from 0 to 10 and from 0 to negative 10 on both the x and y axis. So just make sure that that's what you've got. Okay, so that kind of takes care of what they're sort of asking you with A, but we did it a little, little simpler. All right, and then we're going to go to B, and it says graph the function f of x is equal to x by entering or by pressing y equals. Okay, so again, on your graph, you're going to go to the y equals button and we're going to just put in y equals x or if you think about it that would be y equals 1x plus 0 okay and then after you do that hit the graph and it draws the line for you okay then to show you what happens when you change the y-intercept, we're going to graph some other functions. So right now, if you want to go back to y equals, right now, literally your equation is y equals x plus 0. The, the y-intercept is 0, okay, because it goes through the origin. Um, but let's do some other lines where we keep the x, so the slope is still going to be 1, okay, y equals x but we're going to change the y-intercept, okay? So let's make a second line. Um, x, let's say, I don't know, plus 3, okay? So the slope is 1, and the y-intercept this time is 3. We'll make another one. x, but this time we're going to say the y-intercept is negative 3. Okay, hit the graph button. You now have three lines that should show up, and they're drawing the second and third line. Okay, 
So what we did basically is we took that original line and we translated it up when we gave it a positive 3 for the y-intercept. Take that original line and we translated it down when we gave it a negative 3 for the y-intercept. Okay, so f of x equals, to, equals x. That's kind of the same as us saying y equals x. There's our original line, our very simple line. The slope is the coefficient in front of the x, which is not written, so we know that it's 1. And then there's no b written either, so we know that the y-intercept in this case is 0. Okay? f of x is equal to x, or y is equal to x. Um, you may hear me refer to it as the parent function. So for instance, like what I'm saying is this in a lot of cases is going to be the basic function that we start with and then we're going to change some things and see how that affects it. Okay, But for the first couple of things that we did, remember we did these three lines, what do all of the graphs have in common? Well you noticed that the coefficient in front of 1 didn't change, so the slope was the same for all of them. But the y-intercept, where they crossed the y-axis, changed. Okay, let's look at number one. It says a vertical translation moves all points on a figure the same distance, either up or down and that would apply to our line that we just drew. Okay, Use the idea of a vertical translation to describe what happens to the graph of f of x equals x plus b when you increase the value of b and when you decrease the value of b. Okay, so basically if we start with our parent function, the original function before we do anything with it, f of x is equal to x, when we rewrite it with a positive b, f of x equals x plus b, that means that whole entire line is going to move up the y-axis. When we take the parent function f of x is equal to x and we give it a negative b, then that's going to take the whole line and move it down, which is what we saw when we looked at our graph. Okay, Remember, the middle one is the original, f of x is equal to x plus b is the top line, f of x is equal to x minus b is the bottom line. Okay, So we've just taken the whole line and either shifted it up or down. The slope remained the same. Okay, so before I go on to the next page, you might want to make just a note that this whole explanation on this first page was when we changed the y-intercept value, when you change the value of b, okay? And that caused the whole entire line to just shift up or shift down, okay? When you're changing the b value. Remember that we didn't do anything to the slope. All right, I'm now on page 282, and this time it says building new linear functions by stretching, shrinking, or reflecting, okay? Investigate what happens to the graph of f of x is equal to mx, remember m is the slope, when you change the value of m. So this time we're changing the value of the slope and we're going to see what happens and what that looks like. Okay. So take your graphing calculator, clear out all but the parent function, so go to the y equal button, Okay. hit the little, here let me, Okay, hit the little down button right there, clear, down button, clear. Okay, so I just have y1 is equal to x, so that's my original or parent function. And this time we're going to change the slope. Okay, so in the next one maybe we'll put um, y equals 2 x 
and in the next one we'll put y equals 4x. Okay, so this time the y-intercept hasn't changed, but we have changed uh, the value in front of the x. So we have 1x on the parent function, 2x, and then 4x. Okay, and then we're going to hit graph to see what... Okay, so there's the parent function, and then there's 2x, and then there's 4x. Okay, it says what do the graphs have in common? How are they different? All right, well, let's look. What do they have in common? Well, it looks like they are all going through the origin. Or you could say they all have the same y-intercept, which is 0. How are they different? Well, they all have different slopes because that's what I changed when I went to the y equals button and put in some new equations. As the value of m increases from 1, does the graph become steeper or less steep? Well, clear this. Let's do that again. Clear. Hit the graph. It will give you the original, then the 2x, then the 4x. Okay. Alright, the original, and then 2x is steeper, 4x is even steeper than that. So let's answer these. Okay, so when I graphed, I did the original parent function. I did f of x or y equals 2x, and I did f of x is equal to 4x. They all had the same b value. They all had the same y-intercept, which was 0. But the coefficient in front of the x gives you the slope of the line m, and that was different for each line. This one has a slope of 1. This one has a slope of 2. This one has a slope of 4. Okay. Now, as the coefficient, as m becomes bigger and bigger, notice that the line got steeper. Okay, so make sure to make a note of that. Okay, so I just jotted that down as an answer. All right, and then we're going to do b. It says again to press the y equals and clear out all but the parent function. Okay, so we're going to do that. y equals... We'll leave the first one, but we're going to clear this one, clear this one. Okay. It says then graph other functions of the form f of x is equal to mx by entering their rules. Uh, but this time use only values of m that are less than 1 but greater than 0. So for instance, maybe 0.5 and 0.2. Okay, so I've got x, so 1x. Uh, my second graph, I'll do 0.5 x, uh, and then I'll do 0.2x. Okay, when I hit the graph line, remember, it's going to graph y1 first, and then y2, and then y3. So here we go. y1, y2, y3. Okay, so you should notice that as the slope gets smaller, the lines get closer to horizontal. The, the lines get less steep or flatter. Okay? Okay. So I just wrote, um, it says, as the value of m decreases from 1 to 0, does the graph become steeper or less steep? So remember, I started off with f of x is equal to x, and then I did f of x is equal to 0.5x, f of x is equal to 0.2x. And as my m got smaller and smaller, so from 1 to 0.5 to 0.2, the line becomes flatter. If I put a 0 in, in front of my x, you would notice that I would get a horizontal line because the slope is 0. And when the slope is 0, that's a flat horizontal line. Okay, join me for the next screencast and we'll pick up where we left off.